In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his last and beloved Mazar Muhammad, and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. This is the fifth part of a series entitled Discoveries from the Quran. And in this series, brothers and sisters, I show with the guidance of Allah, God Almighty, the superiority of the knowledge of Allah in the Quran, in the last revelation of Allah God to people. And how by pondering upon this, the verses of this book, Allah will make the believer the teacher of others and not the one on the receiving end. So among this, the topics of this um, part is the one you can see on the screen, which is 2012. Now, this topic gained much attention um, in, in these days. And for those who don't know about 2012, let me give you some key points about it. Now, the whole kind of um, attention to this topic started with um, a documentary that an American channel did, which is called History Channel. They did a documentary and about 2012, and there are two key points in that documentary. The first one is that they said that in ancient civilizations and ancient cultures, like the Maya, for example, their calendar ends at the end of 2012, namely the 21st of December 2012. And they said also the other key point is that at that date, catastrophes will happen like um, earthquakes, uh, tornadoes, um, and the world will end meaning it will be the end of days at that uh, date. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this topic is that a lot of people started getting, um, started getting confused about this and uh, fear started creeping into their hearts. And I wanted to show the Quranic view on this. Now, Allah in the Quran gave us all branches of knowledge. Everything you want to know, you can find it here by pondering upon the verses of the Quran. Now I will show how Allah God Almighty in the Quran tells us the truth about this topic by pondering upon three verses. So to start, to know about the Quranic view on 2012. As I said, by pondering upon the three verses of the Quran. Only by pondering upon three verses, we can know a complete understanding for this topic. Three verses only. The first verse is um, verse number 187 of chapter 7 of the Quran, which reads this translation for it. They ask you about the hour. When will be its appointed time? Say, the knowledge of thereof is with my Lord. None can reveal its time but he. Heavy is its burden through the heavens and the earth. It shall not come upon you except all of a sudden. They ask you as if you have a good knowledge of it. Say, the knowledge thereof is with Allah God, but most of people know not. So here in this Quranic verse, we ponder upon it. Allah is telling us that people are asking about the hour, the date of the hour. Say, this is the answer. Say, the knowledge thereof is with my Lord. Meaning that Allah Almighty did not reveal the exact date of when the day of judgment will come, when the end of days will come to any prophet or uh, any person or even angels. So no one knows the exact date when this uh, universe will end at the end of days except Allah God Almighty. And Allah also says that it will come to you of, all of a sudden, meaning that the, day, the end of days, the end of... Uh, all of this matter will come suddenly. So the first conclusion we learn from this is that they talk about a certain date for the day of judgment or the end of days like 21st of December 2012 is or, ha or has no basis according to the Quran. So according to the last revelation of Allah God to people, setting an exact date to the um, day of judgment is something um, not true. Also, we can learn the wisdom and mercy of Allah God Almighty in keeping this date secret. 
Now, suppose, let me give you an example. Suppose that a person is told that he will die after 10 years or even, let's say, 20 years. What will happen to that person is that that will destroy his mental capabilities. For example, if you want to, if you want to do a certain job, he will say, what's the point? I will die in 10 years. So that will make him like, like psychological paralysis. He will die each day a thousand deaths until he reaches the, the end of uh, his life. So you see the mercy and the, the mercy of Allah God Almighty in keeping the, the date of when the, everything will end secret. Now, that's the first conclusion, for the first kind of um, key point about this topic 2012. Now, the second verse to ponder upon is verse number 43 of chapter 11 of the Quran, which reads, the son replied, I will betake myself to some mountain. It will save me from the water. Noah said, This day there is no savior from the decree of Allah God except him on whom he has mercy. And waves came in between them, so he was among the drowned. Now in this Quranic verse, Allah tells us what happened between Prophet Noah, Noah and his son. And from this verse we can learn that when people, they do injustice to themselves and others, by committing sinful acts, um, acts of injustice, Allah teaches us His methodology in, de in dealing with people, how He deals with people. And it can be summarized into three parts. So when people, they do um, bad deeds, they do injustice to others, like killing others, doing um, uh, adultery, taking usury, all of this. The first thing Allah does is that He sends guidance with prophets, with um, good people, delivering the guidance of Allah God to people, showing them the straight path, the correct path to do. Now, if people, they don't comply with this guidance, then Allah does a second action, which is that He sends kind of warning, warnings to people. What people say about natural disasters, there's nothing so-called natural disaster. Earthquakes, hurricanes, um, droughts, uh, flooding, they're all signs from Allah God Almighty telling people they're doing something wrong. That's the second action. Now, then Allah gives pe people a period like um, um, a delay, let's say here, to people to ponder upon their actions, to correct themselves. Now, if they don't do that, all of, all of, these, all of these guidance and warnings, then the decree of Allah comes, which is the destruction of people that are doing these uh, sinful acts or um, injustice. Okay, um, so if we ponder upon this in the context of um, 2012, now this kind of what I described about how Allah deals with the injustice of people, it's constant from the day of creation, or from the day Allah created the heavens and the earth till, this, till the end of days. So if we ponder upon this day and age we are living in, we see that the sins that Allah destroyed the previous nations based upon, they are becoming widespread. They are no longer um, limited to a certain region or certain people. Let me give you examples. The sins that Allah destroyed the people of Lot, homosexuality and the other derivatives of this kind of um, uh, sin. Now this kind of, this sin is becoming widespread it's all over the world, it's not limited to a certain group of people. Another example, the sins of, uh, of stealing money and uh, uh, taking bribes and all of this. This is the sins that Allah God Almighty destroyed the people of Shu'aib, another prophet, based upon. And this kind of sins are becoming widespread. Another kind of kind of sin is wasting the resource, resources of the earth. And this is the sin that Allah destroyed the people of Salih, another prophet, based upon. And we see people now, they are wasting the resources of the land, like oil, like trees, like water, like gold. It's becoming widespread also. And all kind of injustice. So we see that these sins, they're becoming widespread all over the world, not limited to certain people. So, the way Allah deals with this is the same that He dealt with people in the past. Firstly, He sends prophets to warn people. And the prophet that Allah sent 
in this day and age is Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his and the guidance he brought and the revelation of Allah God Almighty the noble Quran stays with us till the end of days so the guidance is there now we see that people they are not complying with the guidance of the Quran the last revelation of Allah God to people so Allah gives them warnings and we can see warnings every day in the news hurricanes earthquakes droughts floods all of this Allah is telling people you are doing something wrong doing justice now we now we are in a period of of giving us like um, time to reflect and to correct ourselves if we don't do that then Allah's decision will come his decree and these what the people are called natural disaster they will intensify and will be a punishment for people all over the world so the other aspect 2012 that 2012 that this natural what they call natural disasters will increase intensify that's correct now the big question now when the decree of Allah comes and it's coming in the near future who will survive this the question who will survive the answer again in the Quran in one verse and that verse is uh, verse number 24 of chapter 9 of the Quran which reads say if your fathers your sons your brothers your wives your kindred the wealth that you have gained the commerce in which you fear a decline and the dwellings in which you delight are dearer to you than Allah God and his messenger and striving hard in his cause then wait until Allah God brings about his decision and Allah God guides not the people who are disobedient to Allah God so here Allah is giving us the key what characteristic what action you need to do in order that when the decree of Allah comes the torment for people that Allah will save you from this the mere requirement to be saved here Allah tells us and striving hard in his cause so let's expound this a little more now Allah is telling us here and we learn from this verse that you need to do a certain action to be saved which is striving to make the word of Allah God supreme meaning striving to spread the word of Allah God, to teach people the Quran to propagate the word of Allah God Almighty that is the necessary requirement to be saved when the decree of Allah comes so a person can be can uh, be a person who prays he fasts he do all of these charities but that will not save him the, the thing that will save you besides doing all of this the main requirement is that you strive to make the word of Allah supreme let me give you examples suppose that a person gives copies of the Quran in different languages to non-muslims he will be saved because he's striving to make the word of Allah supreme a person making a website telling people about the Quran about the guidance about the signs of the Quran he will be saved a person who is hearing this lecture he give, for example sends by email even if you do the smallest act the smallest kind of um, um, action to make the word of Allah God supreme then Allah will save you when his decision comes so I hope now it's clear who will be saved when the torment of Allah God Almighty comes to people due to their injustice so let me summarize what the complete answer from the Quran regarding 2012 firstly setting an exact date for the end of days has no basis according to the last revelation of Allah God to people the Quran secondly that the earthquakes hurricanes um, floods and droughts will intensify in the near future that's correct thirdly who will be saved when this uh, happens a person who did even the smallest effort to make the word of Allah God supreme I hope now it's clear the answer about the topic of 2012 from the guns of the Quran and to know more details about this topic please visit my website at www. Quran-miracle.com and you can email me at zquran at yahoo.com and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all.